Good morning, Rabbi Isai. Ah, we didn't even see me in Rosh Hashanah. It's hard to cry. It's him to read it. Bakasha, shkoyach. It just doesn't for the camera, you know. Thank you. So this is a a follow-up of on yesterday's email. This it made me feel really proud of these guys. Someone sent me a clip of the Hebrew Shear where we started reading this email just to clarify we're not affiliated with this restaurant and by no means we're sending this to advertise. Because somebody made like a remark, maybe in the Hebrew Shear. We started with MDY in the beginning of Perak HaMoycher Sasvino and wanted to celebrate finishing our first Perak. No, I, I showed this yesterday, but here's the behind the scenes. They just started Hamoycha Sasvina and they wanted to celebrate the very first parak. We put out the name of the restaurant to show a car satay for them for letting us use their VIP room for the Sheer and Siyam. Dear Rebelli, I'm happy to share with you that we recently started the MDY night share for young working Bacharim in our neighborhood in Lakewood. It's beautiful. Last night, in honor of completing our first parak with MDY, we celebrated having our Sheer in the party room of the recently opened Ishtabach restaurant in Tom's River. Thank you for all the effort you put into the shir. Now, oh, it makes it even. I usually, I usually don't show the same picture twice, but this is a, it's a whole different. Uh, they should have a lot, a lot of tzlach, getting together, learning Torah on a screen, Givaldic. Joe Babeev. Someone recently asked me when I joined the shir, and part of me wished I could proudly declare from Brachas, of course, but I had to admit it was only from Baba Basra Daf 66. Inspired by watching a day with the world's largest daf shir, here's another person who came from that one podcast, two I think, uh, in two emails today. But Baruch Hashem, I feel like something special is brewing here. Accountability has always served me well. So I started a small WhatsApp group with a few friends. After every daf we finish, we simply write, today's daf, done. It's an idea that we threw out a while ago. I think it's a great idea and other people should do that as well. And there's another email today with the same idea. It's a small act, but it keeps us all motivated. Daf after daf helps us stay on track. You have a chavrusa, but not a literal chavrusa, just a WhatsApp chavrusa that you say, done, like me and Noam. A couple of guys, not at the daf, other stuff. A couple of guys are excited on go- doing a live share. So we're kicking things off in Queens. This month's shops will be learning live. What could be better? Here's the, check this out. He just started, Daf 66, he's already making Lava Malkas, he's already into it, he's taking things into his own hands. Unbelievable. Somebody else sent me this email showing that the Hebron Queens, New York, getting together every Mazi Shabbos, every Mazi Shabbos it says there, starting this week, Mazi Shabbos needs Sovim Vayelach to listen to Sunday's Daf live. The show will be preceded by lavish Lava Malka. Special thanks to Rabbi Yaniv Mirov, Mirav from Chazak, and Mr. Yossi Babayev, who sent the other email for saying this up, this should be a schus for us to have Ksiv Chasim Toiva. And to show Hashem that we are serious about learning. Oh, and I'm going back to the other email. I finally found a good reason to own an Android. See the image attached. I guess he watches the shin and can see the whole Gemara. In uh, half screen. Looking forward to continue learning with you and the MDY family. War- warm regards. Mm-hmm. Yosef, bye-bye. Thank you for helping me overcome my biggest fear in learning, our boys, he says. Although I went to mainstream yeshivas as a non-numbers guy, learning any of the bavas was something I stayed away from and always felt bad I would not get to learn them. Especially when looking at the big safer with so many blot, referring to Baba Basra, I said, that's not going to happen. Thanks for giving me Baba Basra. I think Baba Basra, for me, it's mamish easy. It, it, it's flowing. I love Baba Basra. Baba Basra, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 uh, I think it, it just has a bad name for no reason. So, I mean, I don't want to say, but not a bad name. People are scared. Baba Basra. It's, it's shorter dapim. It's, it's easy. It flows. 90 Days also told me that mentioning hashtag Nachman Seltzer is important. So here it goes. His hit song, Your Shalayim, was composed by my brother-in-law, Schneier S. Despite traveling out of state weekly, I see you, Schneier, coming sometimes right from the airport straight to the base manager to do the daf. This inspired me to try. Special thank you to MDY, Arya Himes, for posting and posting Zalman Silver, Yushikoyev Zalman. You know what he's talking about? The guy... That- I have a song, I know. Shalom Aleichem, I want to share Nachas Graham and a sincere request. Baruch Hashem, I was able not, to, not only rec- to not only recruit a new member of the, of the, to the DAF, but also to be able to follow his progress. I'm speaking about my adopted son, Jason Hacherman, who started in Baba Basra DAF 24, and has been consistently keeping up for the past two months. I know this because he has texted me every single time that he finishes each DAF. Another Chavrusa on WhatsApp. In addition to this, a few days ago, he informed me 
that he's also caught up from the beginning of the Masechta, is now on track to make a scene with the rest of us, major nachas. I also want to thank you for personally, oh, before I forget, the boy said tremendous mazel tov to the Rome Kornbluth, tremendous shidduch here, his son with Reb Mordechai Berg's daughter. Oh. Reb Mordechai Berg from Mivaseret. Unbelievable. The Mechab is Svarim. Great shidduch. So it's like just a few blocks away, so you know they're going to, it's, it's great to always have it here in the neighborhood. Mazel tov, mazel tov, their own. The Ron and I share a, a Enikel. Mando the dog. <laughs> <laughs> so when I used to go to Chutzlar, it's when we had that little guy. Now he's in Los Angeles. So the Ron was very kind and used to... And no? If the dog... We, we just had the Shiloh. If the dog saw you after all these years, that you'd go Meshog, you'd have a heart attack. Yeah. I would also go heart attack. <laughs> you'd have a heart attack. Wow. Go. Be like my wife, fly all the way to Los Angeles to see. Tomorrow, Jason will be going through a difficult... We never had to get rid of him and send him to Los Angeles. It's a very, very sad mice. Uh, I'm not going to go there. Oh, uh, I used to try to learn in the morning, and he didn't like me so much, but there's nobody else. But Mokim Shainish, she'd come and bother me and make me hold him while I was nervous. I'm serious. I had to get rid of him. Jason will be going through a difficult medical procedure. I don't have the ability... Oh! I want to thank you for personally reaching out to him while you were on your latest trip. I don't know, you don't know how much that one phone call had meant to him and to me as well. Thanks, for, to, I hope to have him. Whoever was on the bus with us during the, the Europe trip, I spoke to him while I was in the, hopefully, maybe we'll get to see him, maybe we'll come to the Shabbaton or something. Thanks also to my cousin, Rabbi Shapiro, for helping make the connection. I'm so very proud of the unique family know as MD, known as MDY. Now for the request. Tomorrow, Jason will be going through a difficult medical procedure. That's today. I don't have the ability to respond to uh, Yaakov Shmuel Alevi Ben Chava Brian the Lerfur Shleima Amen. So that we can dive for him and send him some schusim from our learning would mean very much to him and to me as well. May we all have Sures Toivis Bekar of Mamish. Wishing you and the entire MDY family, Ksiva Chasim Toiva, Mati Rosenberg, non every glades edition. There's no division, says Michael Benchetrit of MDY Florida, also mentioned in another email. Oh, here. The end is non every glades edition. There's no division, says Michael. Ben, uh, Michael, no, 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 that's Ben Shetrit from uh, Michael Chessel of MDY Florida. Now, here goes. Dear Rebelli, this morning I was listening on the way to work. I was shocked to hear someone enjoys the sponsorship section. Somebody said he enjoys the sponsorship. The emails are fun, but the sponsors? Little did I know that shock I was about to get. I heard my mother, Janet Chessel, sponsoring for the full name of my father's surgery that day on his knee. <laughs> In that exact moment, I heard that in the shir is when I got WhatsApp that the surgery went well. Maybe it's even a zguler, because from Hashem. But I was really wowed even more than if I woke up from my bunkmate in camp bringing in a horse. Thank you for doing this shir. After I left yeshiva last year, I became the Rosh Chabura of people who don't learn, but if they learned, it would be Be'ion, and the shir has changed my life. <laughs> He's the son of his father. <laughs> <laughs> After I left Yeshiva last year, I became the Rosh Chabur of the people who don't learn, but if they learned, it would be Be'ion and the Shia changed my life. Special thank you for my, to my father. Rabbi, we, where we do have an opening for the, the Kailal I also opened, the, the Kailal Chazar Sashats. I have one in America, I have, I'm opening one here. The, I have a Kailal that we only learn during Chazar Sashats. That's the only time. <laughs> Because since it says in Allah you shouldn't learn, no, I'm, you, I'm, I'm asking that you should uh, fahir for this. Since it says in Allah you shouldn't learn Durkhaz and there's a lot of people that like to learn Durkhaz So you figure, why not? We'll open up a coil. In America, I found a guy. He, when he was a chazan, he brought his Gemara with him and he kept on peeking back and forth. So I held this guy, Mamish could be the Rosh Koyl. Now we're looking here. This guy opened up a Chabura for people that don't learn. And if they do learn, they learn Biyun. How do we pay? It goes by the amount of learning you do. When you learn, what? In the Koyal Chazor Shashats? Akash Baruch pays you. I don't know how, but he pays you. Special thank you to my father. You know, the Reb Chaim Kenefsi says that if you learn Shnaim Mikro Vecho Targum during Chazor Shashats, you're not Yoytze. He passes that. Special thanks to my father. So I'm saying, you ask Hashem how much he pays. Special thank you to my father for trying to convince me to join for months and succeeding. Best wishes, Yitamid Ari Chesel, since Baba Basha is base, spiritually, since Brocha is not base, Ahmed Ali, four words in. I don't know what that means exactly, but okay. Um, uh, oh, there's a lot of stuff. Okay, we got to go right there. 
We'll do this on Matzah Shabbos, please, Hashem. Okay. Shalom Aleichem. Thank you. What's your name? Shalom Wadler. Wadler. Shalom Aleichem. From where? Wow. Shalom Aleichem. Welcome, welcome. Mir Aliyah. To where? To where? We can't do this every day, every day. Yeah. Ah. You want to be called out? What's your name? Steiner? From where? Antwerp. Antwerp. Okay, beautiful. So it was a good thing I announced uh, yesterday what I announced that uh, the WhatsApp group was locked out and they started a new one. You're not going to believe this. Over 200 people, 200, it's a large number, joined the WhatsApp group. So that's, that means that people get the sheer, I don't know if they learn it, but they get it in the WhatsApp. They want to learn it. Is it also. Oh, and what? So people watch the WhatsApp without lots of shots. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't. I, I, I have a raya. I have a raya to you. Middle share. I'll show you that you're wrong. The Rosh Kailal said that during the Shabbos, there are people that watch the WhatsApp. No, they don't. Because if they watch the share, they don't. Rabbi said today is the... We'll do it later? Okay. Today is the yard side of the Chavetz Chaim. So we should learn. We all benefit tremendously from him, from his Svarim, from his Torah, from his Mises, from his Mishalim, from his personality, from everything. So, Lilu Nishmas, Rabbi Yisrael, Mayor Ben... The Chavetz Chaim. Just tell the Rebbein Shalom the Chavetz Chaim. I'll go straight to his account. Ayer Zev. So Mayor Hakoyen. I've been Ayer Zev. Says the Elegy Mishnah. Tzadik Yimlom and Beis on the bottom. Hamoicher Peres L'chaveroi Hareza Mekabel Olov Roiva Tinoifes Leso. You know, you buy something from the store. Let's say... Uh, it happens all the time. You buy strawberries, you're always going to have a few rotten strawberries. It's just part of the course of business. You buy and there's some spoiled stuff. This tinoifus. So, without confusing anybody, without too much trauma, you have to assume that for every kav, there's going to be one lug of rocks, spoiled stuff, whatever it is. One lug is 124th. 124th of all your produce. So let me just show you. We'll start with this. This is Tinoifis. This is what they do today, I guess. You have the grain, and then you have little, you know, some rocks that come out. We'll see in a second. This is the pure stuff. You have some bugs. All sorts of stuff. Okay. You can assume that within whatever you're buying, there's going to be something. So, when you're purchasing wheat, it is a roi vakav, huh? Oh, I did not do sponsors. Yishkoyach. Wow. You're such a... Why do you have to remind me? It's smart, bro. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Here we go. Sponsors, let's see how long it takes. Wow, it's 28. The Kyle of the Month sponsored by Binyomin Rosenfeld for Slochen Business. And I give him a brach of a shidduch bekarev. Parnas Achoydish for the Msechta, for the safe and speedy return of all the hostages. No, I made the brach before. The Parnas Achoydish, Lilinishma Zachary Ben Moshe, Lilinishma Zachary Bas Yosef, Parnas Achoydish, myself, and Abba Renner, and Dr. Moshe Tzvi Dauber. For the safe and speedy uh, refuah shleima, safe and speedy return of our chayelim, especially now they're going in. Oh, my wife's cousin called up and said her son was away for two months. Married guy with a kid. He came home. Twenty-four hours later, they called him up and they said, "You got to go to Lebanon." So he's home for twenty-four hours. He's back in Lebanon. It's not pasha. We don't understand what these family and. That's the chayal. What about the mother who sleepless nights thinking about her son in Lebanon? Matching rebellious donation, the chayalim for the month. They should come on bekarayv. Parnas Rosenfeld for all the schuzim that come from supporting Limerat Torah. 
Paras Shavua, Kid Novation Zal Sian Arma Yonko Rebel Khan President Official, should be Schos, Rakiv Simkom and Fago, Shidok for Rivko, Yudis Basi Avachai. Thank you to Rebbe Sinsefansky for selflessly giving up her husband to the cloud. Should be Schos for a year filled with Mazel Brochat Slocha, Paras Brevach and Rufua. Paras Shavua, Linichmas, Fago, Miro, Bas, Avroham. Paras Ayoim, Aaron, Trowering, Lizech and Ishmas, my mother, Beverly Trowering, Belo, Bas, Henoch. My Borchai is passing in honor of Moshe Hirsch for doing the Or Hamerkaz all these years. It was very rough, very difficult for him. He does a tremendous job. May Hashem bench him and his entire mishpach with much bracha and for many years to come. We will miss the weekly Or HaMerkaz. It's going off? Yes. It's official? Peretz Chaim Levin, Lili Nishmas, the Chavetz Chaim, Harav Yisrael, Meir Ben Ari Zeva Koyin, Marin Shal Yisrael, whose yard set is today, and to the special treasured connection, both Meir, Virabi, Rebelli, and I have to him. And all Klai Yisrael have to him. Art of the month is Chos for Rebelli and the whole MDY staff to continue to make Torah so enjoyable for so many. So we're back in the Mishnah. Hamar Kherpers, the Chaveroi, Harez, and Makabal, all of Roiva. He has to accept him upon himself, a Roiva. So I'll remind Oilam, you don't have to remember this. Kaskilav Yugaidu. Now let's look at the word Kav, Kuf. How many Lug are in one Kav? Lug is right next to Kav. There are four. You go Kav, you take the Kuf, you go to the left of the bottom. Underneath the kuf, there's a dalad. There's four kav, there's four lug in every kav. A kav is made out of dalad lugs. Okay? So, one lug is a quarter of a kav. That means roiva. One lug, there's four lugs in a kav. How many kavs are in a saw? Saw is on the other side of the kuf. Six. Four times six is how much? 24. So it's one twenty-fourth of a saw. One lug is one twenty-fourth of a saw. Okay, you don't have to know this, it's not important for the sugya, but it looks something like this. You have a saw. A saw is made out of six kav, and a kav is made out of four lugs. We're talking about one lug. So when you purchase all that wheat on the right, you have to assume that one cupful is going to be garbage. And you get charged for it, and you cannot get a return on your money. It's part of the deal. Now, what if you find two cups? You find two cups of garbage. So the guy has to give you back one cup or two cups. You know, so sometimes, we could say this later, say it now, sometimes you go to the airport. Your baggage is overweight. So only 50 pounds. You're 51 pounds. The guy says, okay, next. But if you're 53 pounds, then he charges you for every pound. He's not going to say, oh, you get one pound for free. Let me only charge you for two. Something he says, you got to pay for all three. You're overweight, three pounds. Now you're, there's such a thing. You get a little freebie. But once I charge you, once you go over, now I'm going to come back all the way to where it's supposed to be. <clears throat> yeah, but then on a bazola chasa. A what? <clears throat> hey, but once you blacken the wall, so you have to pay for that now that you do. Interesting. Very nice. It's a shamshi that you let a rent, you let us stay in somebody's house rent free in certain situations. If they're not rented, if it's not for rent, you don't want to rent for free. But once you blacken the wall and he has to pay for the paint and the rest, then they mechaibi for everything. Okay. Different mishalom, different things. Hope it's Chaim says that. It's his so he says, Yaakov Vinu. Oh! That's it's the Chavetz Chaim. So this, <laughs> yes, no, Yaakov Vinu was 22 years, didn't see his son. Right. What, why? Because he was away from his father for 22 years. Yeah. I had no choice. He had to be, he had to go, he had to get married. But the last year or so that he could rush back to his father, even in that very time, same. therefore he was then on everything. Back on all the twenty-two years. Wow. Wow. That's on the on the wrong thing. Very nice. I think everybody heard you. Said so I don't have to repeat. What about figs? Now we're starting. It's almost Rosh Hashanah, so I want to tell you a few things about figs. And maybe after this, you won't eat figs anymore. That's too bad. I got to tell you about the figs. It's nefloi sabayra, mamish nefloi sabayra. The way the fig works, it needs to be pollinated. Most, most of the time it needs to be pollinated. And it happens to be the figs, it's a very interesting food. It's eaten by the most animals, it's the most eaten food in the world, figs. 1,200 species of animals, birds, animals eat figs. And it's available all year round. Maybe the only fruit in the world, we learned in the Gemara, there's no time for picking a, a date, a fig. All year round. So it works out for all different animals they could eat all year round. Now, the way it works is that there's a fig wasp. It's called, it's a certain 
fly. There's thousands of types of them. And they take the pollen from the zachar, they go to the nekeva, they wiggle their way into the fig, through the hole in the fig. Once they go in, as they go in, they lose their wings. In other words, they have one tafkid in life. You can make mishalom from this from today to tomorrow. They have one tafkid just for you. They pollinate and they give up their life. They go in there and they never come out. And when once they're in there, they pollinate the fig and they, pollinate, they lay eggs in there. And many, many of these wasps are born in the fig and some of them make it out and some of them don't. Now, when you're eating a fig, you're at some eating a lot of these flies. But the enzymes of the fig destroy these. So by the time you get to eat it, you're not really eating these flies. But that's how it works. Without these flies, you wouldn't have a fig. And Shalom Yisrael, let me show you a little video just to give you a little appetite. These are the... They're going through that hole. And now she loses her wings over there as she does that. The pollinating, they're doing the whole thing, laying the eggs, those are the, the babies that just came out. And now, Bar Hashem, this is just, uh, you know, it's a 10 minutes and, and 30 seconds. Some of them come out, and a lot of them are trapped inside over there. Anyway, just thought I'd tell you that a, a simple thing like a fig. So before the Yerotza in this Rosh Hashanah, you should have Kavana. Oh no? Oh, it's just uh, one of the Shivas Aminim. It's Shivas Aminim. Uh, I thought, I don't know. I thought there is. I, do we, we have a, a Yerotzin for it. Maybe it's the Gro. <laughs> Nobody should have Tainas. Okay. Mikabalolov. Yerotzin on what? Yerotzin on the flies? <laughs> Look at this. Mikabalolov. Now you can understand a little better. Mikabalolov. Eser mitulo islamea. 10% you should know is going to be wormy. What's worse than biting into a fig and finding a worm? Yeah. Finding half a worm. Very good. Dailam knows. Okay, Baruch Hashem. Martiv Shilyayin. A person who buys a whole cellar. Martiv, a cellar of wine. Mikabalal of Eser Koisis Haislamea. He could assume the 10% is about to be vinegar. It has good flavor, but the, the, the smell is very vinegary. That's normal. Here we even have a picture. Ten percent will be not drinkable. Kankanim, or maybe yes, drinkable. Kankanim b'sharay. This is interesting. This has nothing to do with food. You go, you buy a keg from a certain person. The kegs, it's just empty keg, but since they produce so many of them, so it's like here in Israel we get to know. In America, they don't never they don't know about this stuff. But when you buy like plastic cups. So, you know, in every, in every uh, batch, there's going to be a couple plastic cups that are no good. The, the Chinese type. The, the, the Americans have no idea. Everything is perfect, this, that. They get the other. Mikabalol of eserti pitotsois lemea. 10% is just no good. Says Gemara, Tony Rav Katina, Roiva Kitnis Lasa. Says Rav Katina, that when we say that the 124th, you should remember that, that, that tumbler thing that took out the rocks. It's not rocks, he says. We're talking about 124th is a different species of seed. We're looking at wheat, and in the wheat there's a little bit of kidneys. There's beans. This, this is why kidneys is a problem for Ashkenazim, because kidneys grows together in the same fields as the... Only on Pesach, yeah. The, 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 this is not a joke. This is, uh, Rabbi Vad Yosef said, somebody wished him, uh, Ashkenazi guy wished him that the Rav should have Chakoshev Sameach on Pesach. So he said, and you should have an easy fast. <laughs> 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 it has to be that I, every Pesach I, I gain 10 pounds easy with the kidneys and everything that we have. But okay. Let them think, let the Sephardim them think that we, we mamish, we starve ourselves. There's better food on Pesach these days. They came up with these... Re- we have French toast in the hotel. French toast. And it tastes literally like French toast. Made out of potato. Everything. The best of the best. Okay? So, again, when we're looking through the, the seeds over here, you get one cup, one look full of garbage. It's not just garbage. It's not dirt. We're talking about kidneys. I don't know, and I didn't see this anywhere, and I didn't even ask my chavruzi yet. It just says, Rav Katina, and I wonder if it has to do with this halacha that he said, kidneys. I don't know. Just throwing it out there. 
Vafruris loy, what? And, 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 and dirt is not included in the cup. Now I have a question. Here's my question based on this picture. Because it happened to me, I've seen this with my own eyes. You go to the fruit store and you see a stem on the, again, this is not for Americans, it's all polished and everything, seen like this. But here in Eretz Yisrael, at least, sometimes you go and there's a nice gesunta stem. Okay? <laughs> now, if you weigh it, you, you get charged for it. So I have a question. You are a big tzaddik. You go and you pull the stem off. You don't even buy any uh, tomatoes. You pull the stem off. Do you owe the store any money for the stem you just pulled off? If you're buying it, can you pull the stem off? Okay, I don't know. Let, let, one step at a time. Could you, if you pull the stem off, you're over on anything? Do you owe him any money? They, they expect it to stay on. People do it. Yeah, I know he works. He still no, he works. Oh, they expect people to take it off. I hear. Let's say they don't. Good. It lasts long. Thank you for ruining my whole thing. I appreciate it. <laughs> let's say. Let's just say. Let's just say. They don't expect. Let's say. Okay. I feel like I'm certain people. In the mishpacha, when I say it in Shabbos. <laughs> but it's not like that. But, but let's just say, what, what do you mean let's just say? But it's not like that. But, but let's just say, can we, let's... Okay. Fighting the hypothetical. What's that? Okay, next. So, are you, let's say you took it off. Now what? My daughter doesn't know that. She's in Utah now. She doesn't have that. We're in the middle of the year. Hello, you want to schmooze now or... Yeah. Oh. Okay. She's in a different time zone. I got to get used to this. Two Israelis. No Americans came over to me. Two Israelis came over to me. At two different times, said, one said, I started crying when you said that you don't want to move to Utah and that you might follow her. Another guy said, you ruined my day. You ruined my day. You're really leaving? I said, yeah, but not today. In a few years from now. But it's the beginning of the end. You, I have to prepare you guys. It's a three-year plan or something. Since, since we know you, it's the beginning of the end. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm still, I'm always a Taurus. Yeah, don't get, don't get too excited. The Israelis don't have, they don't have yet. Okay. Anyway, but I see she's mom from Mabubu. She never called me during Shir. She's in a different, and her kids are getting up at three in the morning and everything. Okay. I'll go bottom. So, the answer is, hold on a second. The answer is, that you would have to pay for the stem. You would have, have to pay for the stem. Now I have another question. What if you say, you know what? Let me put it back in the pile. You let it put it back in there? The answer is no. If it's there, okay. But once you take it out, you hold it not. So here's the Gemara. It says in Mephorosh here. Last line on the moment. A guy walks over to his friend's bag of wheat and he sees stones in there and he takes out one stone unbelievable you're helping out I'm a chutzif. this guy's going to sell wheat with stones I'm taking out the stone he has no business selling stones I'm helping him no you're going to pay for the weight of the stone why? because when people buy wheat they buy it with stones there's a look there's one cupful for every saw he has the right to put it in there as a, as a side note, maybe, I don't know, I'm just throwing this out there. Maybe when you're learning Torah, you have a Chavrusi, you're learning Torah, and you get up to go to the restroom, it's possible, I don't know, I didn't see this anymore, it's possible it's part of the learning. It's all, it's within the Chavrusi, so even the stones that Kosh Baruch could pay you, even when it comes to mitzvahs, drinking the coffee, let's say, take it, maybe, I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> but giving it back, says the Rashbam, he brings the possibly Sasu Oval, it's Isid the Raisa, or whatever, let's uh, it says in the Torah, don't do wrong, Avel. This is to put back the stone that's wrong. So once you have it in your hand, now I have a Shiloh. I, I don't think it's a Shiloh. I think I know what the uh, sock is, but I'm not going to pass it. You pass it. Man, I, I used to do this a lot uh, in the last few years, maybe because of the shear and everything. I didn't have the opportunity. But I used to go out to the Merkaz on Friday and buy a lot of stuff for Shabbos. There's always a guy selling strawberries on the side of the road over here and in plastic containers you look in the bottom you see these rotten rotten strawberries the top they're gorgeous everything looks beautiful and you take a look in the bottom it's like oozing and it's like not edible 
Now, if he picked up that rotten strawberry with his own hand, it's like a tzrar, like a, like, a, like a stone. It's not edible. Does he have the right to put it on the bottom of the, of the thing? It might be mamish geneva. I don't know. If it's part, that's how he bought it, and you took a spoonful and you put it in, okay. But he already took it in his hand. He already held it. It's like a, it's like a stone. In my, that's my little, I'm not a rabbi. I don't know. And maybe this is the Midagamakam. I don't know if you could say Midagamakam. Every strawberry seller in Israel probably does the same thing. What is he supposed to do? Take the loss on all those strawberries? I don't know. We're just throwing it out there. Kitnis Roiva. You're talking about beans. Again, there's one lug, one cupful of garbage. Afruris, Pachis Miroiva. So, this Afruris. <coughs> Means, pockets meroiva means up until sorry. If you have, if you find the beans in there, beans are up to a roiva, but the dirt is pockets meroiva. It's a little less, and we're talking about a minute thing. Roiva exactly a, a cupful. Ad roiva until shemaleichim. You just got back now, sitting here in cheer. Wow, I'm like, okay, sorry, I'm not, I'm not focused. Huh? You, let me know when you go to the Kaisal, then we'll talk. Okay. I know my Ramad, the Shemesh Chavra, including myself, unfortunately. We, I, when we moved there, we went to the Kaisal every day, then two, a month later is every week, then two months later is every year. And now it's every 10 years, right? He says he came here before the Kaisal. He, he's not going to go to the Kaisal until I don't know when. So, yeah, Tish above, who knows what. When, when it comes to dirt, you don't get a full cup full. If a person sells fruit to his friend, so yes, if he's selling wheat, you have to understand there's going to be some beans in there. How much? A full cup. When it comes to barley, a full cup of straw. Adoshim lentils, When it comes to lentils, you get lentils, you get a whole cup full of dirt, <laughs> stones, all that stuff. My love, who had in Look, it's all in the same paragraph. It speaks about chitim, speaks about sarim, speaks about lentils. So just like lentils gets dirt, sarim also gets dirt. Says the no. Shani Adashim, The way Adashim work, lentils. Here's a little bit of a video of it. You can see on the edge of the lentils, there's like piles of dirt. Here, you see the dirt, dirt, dirt? Let me show you in, a, in an AI image. The dirt at the end of the lentils. The way it works, you go over to the, to the, to the plant, you yank it out of the ground. So when you yank something out of the ground, obviously you're going to have a lot of dirt. So that's normal to have dirt. It's only because the lentils... That's how you do it. You pull it out of the ground. But wheat and barley, you don't pull out of the ground. So maybe let's go the opposite way. Maybe you don't get any. Forget about uh, less than a cup. You don't get, you don't get uh, even one ounce. Says the no. And so the Rishbam explains here we have to just stick it in. Because if wheat does get dirt, so let me ask you, what's the bigger chiddush? A plant that typically you yank out with dirt, you get dirt. And a plant that you don't yank out, and there's never dirt, you get dirt. Which one is a bigger chiddush? To say that dirt is included. Obviously, the bigger chiddush is something that never has dirt. It's a very clean fruit. To say that you get a full cup full of dirt as part of the deal is a big chiddush. Something like a, like a, t- a potato today. Potatoes have dirt on them. You know, that, so that's normal. So if I tell you, oh, you should know, potato, you get some dirt. Every potato gets dirt. But a nice, clean apple... To say that apples have dirt, that's a big chiddush. So the Rashbam says, that, that why, is the, why is the Gemara telling, why is the Brisa telling us uh, uh, the halacha by, by lentils, which always have dirt? Say the halacha by, by wheat. Obviously, that, the, wheat, wheat does not get any dirt. No, it does get dirt. So then, as the Rashbam explained, we have a problem. Why did you mention lentils and not wheat? Because Adoshim and Tzrichle is a big chiddush in lentils. The Salkadai Tachah Mino Kivin Nima Akar Okrilu. Yoisim Aroiva Nami Likabel. Look how much dirt is in, is in this picture over here. Maybe there should be more than a cup full of dirt. Maybe you should get two cups when it comes to lentils. One cup for wheat, two cups of dirt, 
for lentils. It's across the board. Everybody gets one cup, one lug, and that's it. Omar Abuna. Okay, we got to pay attention to this line because that's today's sugya, even a little bit into tomorrow's sugya. Says Ravuna, you come home, you say to yourself, I don't like what I see here. There's, there's a stone here, there's a stone here. Something looks fishy. Let me start um, sifting what I bought. And he sifts, and what does he find? He finds that it's more than one cup. It's actually two cups. Says Rav Huna, minapes kuloi. It's, you have to see the Rishbam because it's not in the words. It's like chesur mechzur in the words. If he's chayshet, says the Rishbam, he's just explaining why he would do something like that. He went to sift it and he found that it's more than the allotted amount that the Gemara gives us. By the way, the Gemara gives us for what it was in time or whatever when we don't have a minog. Let's say the minog in Af- Africa is two cups, so it's two cups. The minog in Eretz Yisrael is zero, it's zero. Wherever you are, okay, but if we don't have a minog, lack of minog, we get a roiva. So now he says, like Shamshi said, when it comes to the rent or like the, the suitcase, sometimes, you know, you see on your credit card a 99 cent charge. I'm saying because it just happened to me, not the whole story, the 99 cent. It said, I get a weekly charge for an app that I don't remember ever downloading, uh, something with Excel. Every week, 399. I would never do that in my life. But I, it was probably there on my credit card for six years. I just noticed an app that says, oh, these are the recurring things I checked. So then you go on, you get on the phone. Now, you typically wouldn't call a place and stay on, online and on hold for 20 minutes for a dollar charge. But once you get a hold of them, now you say, oh, but what about last month? And what about this? What about that? You start fixing things. She says, once I caught you with the two cups instead of one cup, I want my one cup. The, the, the cup that I was supposed to pay you for, I want to return on that as well. But different Shilas here, La Lacha, Reb brings a Shiloh where a guy, he rented a, a, a Zimmer from somebody for a month. A month, it's a nice amount. And the guy tells him, when he rents, he says, listen, I might have to be an extra day or two. He says, you know what? Since you're paying thousands of dollars, extra day or two. Then it turns out he stayed there for a week. So the guy says, oh, you're there for a week. I want, to, I want you to pay for the day or two. He says, no, but the day or two, he told, he told me it's free. He said, no, if you're going to leave after a day or two then. But you didn't leave after a day. You stayed for a whole week. Now I want you to pay for that also. Okay, the kids are... A lot of shyness like that. So, Amri, Amri Lodino. So what, what's Pshat? Is the Pshat because that's the Halacha? Because you really are deserving to get a full refund? No, perhaps it's a halacha of a penalty. Whoever pays, pays for getting good fruit. No, for such a small amount, one cup full, we let it slide. But once I found more than that one cup full, that I will sit there and I'll sift it out. Once I'm matriach, I want to be matriach in it all. Look at this Rashbam, very, very important Rashbam. I'll show it to you in case you can't see it. it says the Rashbam like this. And I love this Rashbam. Why? Because I said this you saw it about the daf, and now I see it in the Rashbam. And the site is like this. Let's say you fall, it's Rosh Hashanah. It's very hard to learn. The three day yantif. So what you should do as is a minimum, open up the Gemara for two minutes. Start reading for two minutes. Two things will happen. First of all, you continue your, your kvias, your, you get, you're used to it, you're in a groove, every single day you're learning, every day. So you can't do the whole day. Okay, so you did two minutes. But another thing that happens a lot of times is once you do two minutes, then you say, you know what, let me do the whole thing. And that's what the Rishbam says here. He'll finish the whole thing. The Dover Kalu, he says. It's a very easy thing. Once you start, then it's easy to finish. But the, the, the trick is to start. The same thing with exercise. <laughs> I can't do it. It's every Shabbos. It's Mamish. I, I didn't have a minute to breathe. You just get on the treadmill for one minute. One minute. Turn it on. Like this, you don't break the Ratzifas. You don't break the Ratzifas. And sometimes, once you get on, Rabbi Sai, since it's the arts of the Chavetz Chaim, let's go live. Hopefully, we could patch in Shuki live from the Chavetz Chaim. Maybe he'll down for us if we ask nice. Shuki, Manishma. You speaking. Ma. Ah, Dovrudra Boisa is there in Belarus. Givaldik. 
So you're going to dive in for a shuki? Come to Pharaoh Bishwilenu. Shuki owns a, a hotel two feet away from the base Medrash. And he told me, I'm not pushing this, but he said that the actual base Medrash of the Chavetz Chaim is owned by the city and they do parties there every night. And uh, it's for sale for $300,000, something like that. Like a minimum amount. He just needs like uh, somebody to step in and, and buy it. That's what he is. But I'll come Shuki, Yishor Koyach, Titpalel Aleinu, Mata Shomea Otano, Titpalel Bishwil Kol Chivrat MDY. Okay. Okay. איך? מי מגיע? מאה אנשים, אוקיי, גוואלדיק. תראה את הקבר, תראה את החדר שנייה. That's his caver. אני פה, אני פה כרגע לבד. לבד, וואי וואי וואי, כל הכבוד, אוקיי. תמסור דש. ביי. אוקיי, just one little thing I want to say over here. A little thing, a big thing for לקובד, גוד שבס, גוד שבס, לקובד ראש השונה. It says over here that sometimes you pick a little thing and it costs you the whole thing. So a few people ask me, stop, Eitzah, what well, well, should I accept for Shana? Kabbalah for Shana. So a couple of things. A lot of people accept things for Shana. Well, this year I'm going to do this and this and that. This year I'm going to stop talking about Shana. Okay. What happens? We all know. We try, we try. And then after three days, the Kabbalah is gone. So maybe two days. Um... For you guys, first of all, I would recommend uh, a little bit of laugh at the bad jokes from the Magachir. <laughs> laugh at the bad jokes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Like that. But anyway, so I have, I have a friend that was Mikabal himself to wear a hat and jacket when he says Ashri Yotzah. Different, different things. But... <laughs> The Rabbi Shol Salanter, first of all, says an unbelievable thing. I think it's negative to us, and I said it a few weeks ago, that the Bechina Akala, you take, Akash Baruch Hu, he says, for our generation only, uh, a new, a new Yisoyed, Mamash, and we can use this Yisoyed because it's Mechadashit. For our generation, since we're not capable, so take a small thing, like, if somebody says to himself, I'm not going to speak during, in Shul ever again. So it's not Negev. So you take, uh, during Kaddish, during Kaddish, and I, I just realized last night that I, I emphasize Kaddish, 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 that you know, we're sitting and we're being Mamlech HaKadosh Baruch who's saying, Omen Yehei Shmei Rabu, giving him all this uh, praise. And somebody stands in the middle of the shul and he's schmoozing. Blah, 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 blah. It's like a chutzpah to HaKadosh Baruch it's, it's not, okay, fine. I won't say what I want to say in that point. But I'll go upon him. The, okay, it's not nice, I will say. I realized that I have never spoken once in my entire life during Kaddish. Why? Because my father, when I was 10 years old, told me this exact thing. He said, it's a chutzpah to speak. I've, I don't remember ever speaking. Kaddish is not my, my thing. Okay, fine. So, the, um, a, a small thing, a little thing, like, if you want to not speak Lashonara, I won't speak Lashonara for half an hour. That, that's what the result, you don't have to say the entire day, my entire life. For a small thing, I won't speak. No. But I'm being very, very serious. One thing, and I'm thinking about it. One thing, one Kabbalah that could change your life drastically in so many different areas is learning the daf. But MS Ben is Ben. I have proof. This I want to show you a video from today. From today. What do you see in this video right here? This is from today. What do you see here? You know what I see here? There's people here in this video that I know. They, and in another show, they would sit during Chazar Shashatz. Here they don't sit. Here they stand during Chazar Shashatz. Not because you have to. Because once we learn during the daf, we learn that it's very important to stand during Chazar Shashatz. Both minyanim, you cannot never find anybody sitting during Chazar Shashatz. It's a pelotic thing. Somebody just sent me this video this morning. Everybody's standing. Most shows, you don't have them. The daf changes your life in so many different areas. So Mela. If us, us, that we're already doing the daf. If you bring one person to the daf, I'm not biased there, I'm a bemis. The schusim, the Vilna Gain says that if you cause a person to do one mitzvah, you get that mitzvah. And the person also gets the mitzvah. You, it's not, you're not sharing. You all get, you bring a guy to the daf and the guy learns hundreds of thousands of words of Torah. Each word of Torah is worth 630 mitzvahs. All those mitzvahs are yours. How many schusim do you get for Rosh Hashanah? Bring that other guy. If you want, increase your learning this year a little bit. 10 minutes more of Chazara. Just increase. But if you're not doing the daf, 
or you're thinking about doing that, or you just joined the DAF, continue with it because it will change your life. Zog the Gemara. Okay, so, and some people say it's a knas, it's a, it's a penalty. It's normal to give away one cup of dirt with, with the other amount. It's not very common to find more than one cup. So we have to assume that the owner of the store, he mixed in deliberately, like people put in water into meat. It's normal for factories to inject water into meat to inflate the price. People throw, they take stones off the street, put it into the fruit to inflate the weight. And if you did it on per- deliberately, now you have to pay for everything, says the Rajbam. A tremendous nafkimina between whether it's a knas or it's a halacha they have to pay is what if I know for a fact that the owner of the store did not put it in deliberately? I saw the truck deliver the fruit and then I bought the fruit a minute later. So if it's a knas, you wouldn't, have, he, you wouldn't, you wouldn't penalize him, you wouldn't make him pay for everything. But if it's a din, then you would. That's the thing, if he deliberately did it within a robot, you're still not and if, you knew it was clean, if you knew it was clean. No, if you knew for a fact that he yeah. did it, no. No, no, no. If you know for a fact that we said on top. If you know for a fact we had on top that you have to pay, you're not allowed, it's avil, you're not allowed to put it in there. And if you're not allowed to put it in, you can't pay. Simon, call trade story, the Robin, the Nachman, or you know the Kabbalah Musa. Basically. So now we have beautiful questions that are going to take you, take us a little bit on a trip through Shas. Call saw, that means it's 8 o'clock. Call saw, she ba roiva mimin acher yimai. Every saw that has a, a, a quarter of a kav, in other words, a look, one cup full, we're talking about climb. You're not allowed to grow wheat and uh, usually it's, uh, the, the, it's um, grapes, but wheat and another species together. So if you have a bunch of uh, cur- um, seeds, wheat seeds, and a little bit of another min, if it's one look worth, you must remove some. It doesn't say take out all the other Seeds, it says you might, you have to take off some. So that would be a big cash on Rav Huna, because according to Rav Huna, it would mean you would have to take everything off. You get a knas, so to speak. You have to take everything off. Savru, the Reva, the Klein, Kiyos, and Reva, the Hacha. It's fancy words, but all it means is I, we thought that it's Issa Daraisa to put these seeds in. The Katani, you might, and it says that all you have to do is get below the one cup amount. You don't have to take the whole cup out, just take a little bit so it's a cup worth. Lai. It's like mutter. It's, it's mutter. If it's mutter, why do I have to take it out? Because climb is the rice. So Rabbanon said we should be machmer, take some out. Sponsored by Yaakov Sitran and Lilu Nishmas, the six hostages that were killed. Rabbi Yossi, Oimer Yavor. Yavor means take every single thing out. Now, that doesn't make sense. If it's an usher, that makes sense. Tinoiv is dummy. Kiyoisim Meroiv Tinoiv is dummy. That it's like the extra, more, more than a one cup full of garbage, which is not allowed to have in the, in the mix. In other words, we're talking about an Isser here. So that would be the Shaila. Tanakama Savar Loikan Sina Natera Otu Isura. Tanakama says, just take off the extra amount above the cup, get to a cup full, and then you're good to go. No, no, no. Once I have to remove, remove it all. It's a knas. Once it's a knas, take off the, the, the mutter part also. But if you're telling me it's mutter, am I over? You just told me it's mutter. Why do you have to take everything out all the way down to the bottom? It's mutter. Says the Gemara, why would Rabbanon tell you to do that? Rabbanon tells us to do that. When you start picking things out of a mix, this is, goes out. This rock goes out. Oh, but these rocks I can leave there. Leave all of a sudden looks as if you're happy with it and you're making the climb. If you're not looking at it, great. It's, it's mutter to leave it in there. But you started picking out. And you're not going to pick it all out. By you not taking all the garbage out, it shows as if you're um, pro this climb, and that's a problem. According to your BIOS. Yeah. That's why I have to go all the way down to the bottom. Toshma. This is the, the Sugi and Baba Metziah. Check this out. Today's Mishnah, Mishnah Yoimi. Givaldic. I like to hear these things on the spot. Kiss from Hashem. You have a Gemach that's accepting money. One guy comes to the Gemach, gives $100 to the Gemach, the other guy gives $200. Of course, when they come to pick up their money, 
They both say that they gave 200. One of them is lying about 100. Not about 200. Each one gave at least 100. One of them is lying about 100. What's the halacha? So according to Chachamim, each one gets 100 because they definitely, each one for sure gave 100. The whole question is on the other 100. The 100 we're going to put in a box and wait until Eliyahu Novi comes. What does Rabbi Yossi say? Anybody remember? What? Everything Why everything, Rabbi Daron? What's the Lashen? Imkain, my hifsid. Ramai. Imkain, very good. Daron, the father of the Chassan. You see, Ramad Chaburg, he married into the Tamad Chacham's family. All 300 goes in a box. Okay, so let's take it once. It, it could be a right in both directions now. This one gave 100, this one that gave 200. Each one claims that the 200 is his. So he has to give 100 to each. The problem is, the guy that lied, the 100, why does he get 100? The guy that lied, we should give him a knas. According to Rav Huna, we should take it all and put it in a box. What's the obvious answer? It's not true. He deserves 100 because he for sure gave 100. But in our case, with the garbage, maybe we should penalize him and make the owner of the store pay for the original cup of dirt that he was allowed to have in the mix, because maybe he mixed the whole thing. Maybe all of the dirt was all a big lie. Once we caught him, so to speak, we found out that there's more than one cup of dirt. So now we don't even know about the first cup of dirt. Now we have to be chash. Maybe the first cup of dirt wasn't allowed to be there. And he's, we don't know for sure that he deserves that cup of dirt. Over here we know for sure the guy deserves 100 each. Each guy deserves 100. Toshim I'm a seifa. So then what about the end of it we could learn from? Or Rabbi Yossi, in came my hips to the Ramai. That would be a beautiful riot to Rabbi Yossi. What Rabbi Yossi says, uh, Ravuna. Ravuna says that you take all the, once we find more dirt than necessary, then he has to pay for all the dirt. And over here also, once we don't know what to do, we take all 300 we put in the box. In this case, on the chart, there's definitely one out of the two is 100% a liar. Haha, but with the dirt. Who said that the, the store owner, the vegetable store owner is a liar? How come he Maybe he didn't put anything in. You're just being uh, him. Who said? Tashma, another raya. Very similar. Svaris, shtar sheish by ribas. We know you're not allowed to take interest. What if you were a mechutz, if you wrote in the shtar that you're taking ribas, you're taking interest. I'm lending you 100 and you have to give me back 150. We punish the Lender, he doesn't get anything, he doesn't even get the principal back. So, you see over here, like Ravuna, once we find that there's a problem, like interest, you don't even get the interest, you don't even get the principal, like by us. Once we find that there's more than a cup worth of dirt, he won't even get paid for the original cup of dirt. From the time you wrote the star, you're over on this thing. In case of Talbot Sami, it's only you say like Kelosh, like says Simon all of Neshach, Loshan of Suma. You're over on the sister immediately. Hacha, but by us, me and the Ruby Arab, who said that he even mixed anything in there? One more, and we're done for today. Matzah Shabbos at nine thirty. It could be nine twenty, maybe nine twenty. We'll do it a little early. Tashma Misefa, the Chacham Oyimim, Goyves Akerim, and the Goyves Aribis. The Chacham say that he does get the principle. That you don't penalize him on everything. So by us, it's a Shailah and Ravuna. Why does Ravuna say you penalize him on everything? He doesn't even get paid for the cup. When by the lender, the money, the $100 that he gave him as a loan, that was 100% true. He deserves that $100 back. But here by the store owner, maybe perhaps all the dirt was there illegally and he doesn't deserve a dime for that. Have a wonderful day. Good job, good job.